going on, guys? It's Phoenix Arise, and welcome, and welcome back to another episode of Modern Minecraft Mod Sauce. How are you guys doing today? I am fan-freaking-tastic. Excited about today's episode. As you can tell, we got a couple of new things over at the base. We were uh, finishing up our cables right behind us right there. Wait, right there, right, right there, right there. And uh, that was so that we could get uh, the Steve's Factory Manager uh, in line and start our some of our automation and uh so what you're going to need for this are these inscribers we went over that last time and uh we'll show you how to uh, get those all uh, nice and automated and you can tell i've already been fairly busy um because once you just set these things you just kind of set it and forget it and it just kind of goes and goes and goes and goes so uh, basically what you're going to do is uh, set up your nine inscribers and the ones across the top are going to be strictly the silicon presses. And if you don't have one, of course, you can just put a hunk of uh, a, uh, a block of iron here in the middle and it'll, it'll churn out another one for you. So once you get one, you're good to go. So those are going to be silicons across the top. And then, of course, there's three different kinds of uh, chips. There's your uh, calculation press, which is created with the using the certs, uh, certus quartz. The uh, logic press, which is going to it's is created with gold, and that creates your uh, logic press. And finally, the diamond one is the engineering press. So uh, you put those across the middle or whatever, however you want to set it up. And then the final one is going to be. Uh, where it puts the uh, chip together with the silicon, and you when you add in the redstone, of course, it creates each one of your uh, your processors, <laughs> and these form the basis for the AE2 system. This is how you get your computers running and all that stuff. So, the uh, Steve's factory manager down here at the bottom, uh, the machine inventory manager, is what you use to automate this entire system, and of course, you got to have your um, uh, some kind of electricity going in there. I always just use the uh, glass cable attached to an energy acceptor attached to the ME controller. And uh, we'll come back to that in just a bit because this is the important part. Anyway, so the thing is we got to get uh, up here at the top, you're going to have just your regular old uh, silicone wafers like these guys. And what we got to do is get the silicone from there into here. And of course, for the inscribers, they have to be inserted from the side, not from the top or the bottom. So we're going to have to program uh, the factory manager to insert silicone from the side here. We're going to have to program the manager to insert certus quartz and gold and diamonds from the side into these guys. Then we're going to have to tell it to grab those things from this row, put them on the tops of these rows, and then put silicon wafers on the bottom of these rows. And finally, after that, we'll have the redstone inserted in and then uh, tell uh, Steve's factory manager that when the, this process here is done, to stick everything back into the chest up here. And of course, ultimately, what we're going to do is put an ME import bus onto this chest as well as a, an ME interface, and uh, then simply import all of the these different products into our ME system. So, it sounds like a lot, it is kind of a lot, um, but it's fairly simple and straightforward once you get uh, going with uh, Steve's factory manager. So here's what the inside looks like, and the first thing that we're gonna do is create a trigger, and the only thing that the trigger does is initiate the action. So this trigger initiates all of this, these processes here, and then this trigger simply initiates putting everything back in, into the chest. So you simply come over here, you create two triggers, one, and you, the way you move these things is simply by grabbing this in the upper left-hand corner, and you know it, it pretty much spawns them here. So you just put one here and put one there, all right? Now, the next thing you want to do is come down here and create these flows. So a flow is where you begin to uh, tell the the uh, the stuff what to do, tell uh, the factory manager what to do. So you just create a flow control, 
And in this case, what we're going to do is you'll see that this has two inputs, one output. So you just simply click down on there, go to connections. And what you need, the number of flows that you need, you need uh, two of them with two outputs here and here. And you need two of them with five outputs here and here. All right. So that's how you do that. And of course, if you screw something up, you just grab it, drag it over there and delete it. All right. Now we also have the inputs and the outputs. You're basically only going to need two inputs, one here and one here. And you simply create that by clicking on this. And then you need a whole ton of outputs, which is basically all these guys and this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten outputs. All right. So the first uh, input is the stage where we want to tell it to go get the silicon to put into these things. Now, the way that Steve's factory manager uh, recognizes these things is through the position. So if you look uh, up here under the mini uh, map, you can see where we're at. And that when we move like this, the values change, of course. So this, where we're standing right now and where the factory manager is, as you can see, is Y107, right? So this next, uh, next, next level here, these inscribers, is going to be Y108, right? Y109 for the middles and Y110 for the ones at the top. And of course, the X coordinates are going to be 568 for this row. 569 for this row and 570 for this row or column. These are columns, sorry. So 570 column one, 569 column two, 568 column three. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is this input. Now, the inventory, of course, the only one that we have in the beginning is this diamond chest. So you simply highlight, highlight that and click it to turn it on. The target is going to be. You know, just basically any of them. I just use the east one because that's just, you know, it's just fine. So you just click on it and you hit activate. Obviously, it says deactivate now because um, it's already activated. Get rid of that. And now the items, there's two things. A white list, of course, you can specify the different items. Or a black list is just grab everything. All right. So we're going to grab them. And... Uh, it's going to grab those and what we do here in the first step the step one so I've, I labeled this one get them so the way that you can uh, it's much easier if you use text on these so you just click the T and it'll let you uh, change the name however you want and then you click the little blue icon the little uh, save disk icon and it saves it for you all right so here we got step one. So this flow is just, you, know, you don't want to mess with this. It's just the sequential versus split. Don't worry about that. Just leave it there. And we're going to have two outputs on this. Um, and what we do is we simply connect one of the outputs to our first flow. And I labeled this flow materials. So what we're doing is we're telling it to go get the silicon, get the quartz, get the gold bars, get the diamonds get the redstone and then to do something with it, which we will discuss in just a minute. So of course the regular thing, and we've got the split with five outputs here. All right, so in the first row, of course, we're gonna have our silicons, right? So what we gotta do is tell it where to go get the silicon, which is all of those inscribers where you can see the Y is uh, 110 at the top, and the X is 568, 569, and 570. You see that? 569, 570, and uh, 568. All of them are the Y. So you get all of those. And then you just simply pick one of the uh, targets. The target is simply, well, where does it go? Or where do I get it? In this case, it doesn't really matter. So just click north if you want. And then you're going to whitelist, and then you will choose the silicon. Once you click on one of these things, you can just start typing, and it'll come up for you. All right. And that's it's really uh, as simple as that for uh, the silicon. And then, of course, hit your text, change it so it says silicon or whatever you want to call it, and close it out. Same thing for the quartz, the inventory. In this particular one, of course, we only are going to, for these three, we're going to specify which inscriber we're talking about. So here's the quartz one. We know that 
That is at y109, and it's at x minus 570. So we look for the inventory. Boom, minus 570, y109. All right? The target is going to, again, be just be whatever. We'll just pick the north base. And the items we're going to whitelist here are the pure certus quartzes. Same for the gold bars. The specific inventory is 569.109. The target is going to, once again, be north. And we'll whitelist a gold ingot. And again, the diamonds inventory is that particular inscriber. Y568.109. And the items we'll whitelist are diamonds, okay? So that takes care of getting all the materials into the second row. So in the third row, we have to get the chips into the top, the, wave, the silicone wafers into the bottom, and then uh, put the uh, redstone in here in order to make the processors themselves. So that's off this second, this second flow. Remember back here, we had the flow from the output over here to the chips. So this is gonna be our finished product. So we know we gotta bring the silicone wafers in, the quartz calculators, the gold logic chips, and the diamond engineering chips, all right? So what we do here in the silicone is tell it to go to the inventory and tell it to, we're targeting those bottom inscribers. You see the Y is 108, it's these guys down here. And you just pick where you want them to go. I always just set it up so that, you know, it just it makes sense to me. This is the calculation processor with the lodge, with the uh, pure certus quartz. So that should go in here. So that makes sense to me. So that way I know I've got everything in the 570 column. So the quartz calculator, um, <clears throat> and we'll target it in the up position here because we want it to go here into this up position, all right? And we're gonna do that, we're gonna do the up position in all of them. So the quartz, the inventory, is that inscriber at 108 minus 570. The target is gonna be in the up slot. And the items, we're gonna whitelist. The only thing we want to go in there is the printed calculation circuit. So, and then we just kinda rinse and repeat on each of these guys. On um, the gold one is the, uh, the inventory, the inscriber at 569 in the same row, 108. The target is going to be up again. The item whitelist is the printed logic circuit. The diamond uh, chip is going into the final inscriber, which is over at uh, 108 and 568. The target is up again. And the item, of course, is the printed engineering circuit. Wonderful. Now, for all of them, of course, we need to get the silicon wafer in. So we pick all three of those, those uh, inscribers on 108. The target is going to be, can you guess? That's right, the down, the down uh, target slot. And, of course, we're going to whitelist the printed silicon. So what that does is that puts in all of our, our chips. Back here, we uh, have the uh, redstone also being inserted into all of those three inscribers that we just did. The target is going to be any of the sides. So in this case, we just did west because we happen to do east on the other one. And the item is going to be the redstone. So that will complete the processors themselves. And so that's that entire system. But over here, of course, we've got to have another uh, method to take the final product out and to stick it back into our uh, chest up there. So naturally, the inventory is going to be all of these guys. The target is going to go in one of the sides, in this case in the east, and we're just going to blacklist everything. So everything can go in. The output is going to be the uh, diamond chest at the top. The target is going to be up or whatever. It's fine. It doesn't matter as long as it's going in. And of course, we blacklist everything. All right, and that's it's it's a pretty simple little system. It can get a little complicated, um, but it's really not that hard once you get the hang of it. So the only thing left to do, of course, is to put. Oh, another thing is to make sure that you've got the first time you run this. Make sure that you've got um, the silicone wafers in the bottom and some redstone in there before you start it up. Otherwise, it gets a little wanky and it's just weird. But 
So let me just show you what happens. Uh, we'll stick some silicone in there. We've already got some printed lard, but I'll just show you what happens. This would be the first time you run it with the redstone and the silicone in there. You can see it inserted the uh, silicone at the top, pushes them. It would be making the chips there. It brings the redstone in the bottom and it starts making the processors. And of course, once the processors are, are completed, it inserts them back up into our chest. And you can see these numbers going down and those numbers going up. And uh, once, uh, of course, you have to have electricity going into the inscribers. Um, and electricity can be brought simply through the glass cable, which we showed you last time. And you have to have uh, one of these energy adapters, which can be sitting on top of your redstone fluids or attached to your generator or whatever it is, that, whatever power system it is that you have being generated. And you have to have this, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the energy acceptor in order to transmit um, the RF uh, into the uh, applied energistics. And uh, on top of that, we're going to start our computer system with the ME controller, which is just an awesome block. I just I love the way it looks. We're gonna we're gonna bring uh, our ME terminal off of that, so we can and uh, we'll put a all of the uh, disk drives attached to that. So that'll be the next part, the next uh, phase that we need to look at. So let me go ahead and uh, get all that stuff ready. And we will be back. Okay, guys, we are back. And we are just about to finish on the last pieces of this whole thing. So what we need to do is the first thing we're going to do is uh, we made a, we already made our uh, ME controller, which is pretty straightforward. And so is our energy acceptor. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, make the uh, crafting terminal for it. In order to make the uh, crafting terminal here, we need some uh, formation cores, some annihilation cores, all of which go into uh, making these illuminated panels. Um, so it's kind of, it's a little, seems a little overly complicated, but at the heart of it is this quartz glass um, with some redstone, some glowstone, et cetera, et cetera. So for a formation core, we just need some logic processors, our Fluix dust and our Certus Quartz crystal. Of course, we make the uh, Fluix uh, um, crystals by throwing in a charged Certus Quartz crystal, a charged one, with some redstone and a uh, the uh, crystal themselves. And you can, if you only, the, you know, the charged ones are a little bit more rare than the regular ones, so. You can make these chargers and then throw in a um, a regular uh, Certus Quartz crystal into them and it'll make them into a charged one. And then you just throw uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, those seeds into the grinder and it creates the dust for you. So no, no big problem. So that's the formation core. The annihilation core is, is basically the same um, recipe except for you put nether quartz there and it's nice because you get two for each one of those the quartz glass is fairly straightforward glass with some certus quartz dust in this uh, pattern there and uh, you take the quartz glass with the redstone and the glowstone and the iron ingot and you end up with three illuminated panels so you use the illuminated panels you just stick one in there and it creates this bright illuminated panel Put the bright illuminated panel in and it creates a dark illuminated panel. That's great. Take the dark illuminated panel with your formation core, your annihilation core, and a logic processor, and you get an ME terminal. We'll take that. And then you put your ME terminal in with a calculation processor and a crafting table. And for some reason, I decided to make a chest instead of a crafting table. Grab our crafting table out of there and stick it, not the chest, once again, <laughs> stick it in there and boom, we've got our ME crafting table, a much bigger table. That's wonderful. And we uh, have our uh, smart cable and I'm pretty sure I've still got some, uh, where is just my regular glass cable? Yeah, there's my glass cable. So I like to, keep the uh, smart cable um you know because it has more stuff for things like this 
All we really need is um, just some of this glass stuff. And let's see, I just have it kind of, I was going to kind of derp it right now, but it's whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Oh, I'm out. Oh, that's fine. Okay, that's all I need. So then we'll stick our ME terminal on and boom, there we go. So now once we start putting uh, disk drives in here, this will expand. And uh, we can create, uh, uh, we can just shift click and create our, everything that we need out of our inventory here, which is wonderful. We'll also be doing a, um, a, a pattern terminal, which is how uh, we'll make other things and whatnot. But um, let's uh, think that's going to all be for the next episode. So thank you very much, you guys, for watching today. And uh, I yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful evening and you guys take care now.